Well, hey, hey, guys. Welcome to the studio. Today, pitch correcting one bad note out of a vocal. We got some work to do. Let's get to it. Let me show you what the finished product will probably sound like based on a couple tracks that I've recorded. This is Gary Newman's Me I Disconnect From You remake. The alarm rang for taste. You could tell from conversations. I was waiting by the screen. Couldn't recognize my photograph. Okay, that's me getting kind of close to it. Now, that's double-tracked, but I intentionally recut a poor vocal. Here it is. The alarm rang for days. You picked up from conversations. And that's what we're going to attack. The top two tracks are the keepers. The one on the bottom is the one that I intentionally kind of messed up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just try to get a ballpark idea where in this recording things went haywire. The alarm rang for days. Ooh, and there it was, right around in here. So here's what I'm going to do. Step number one, I'm going to take this entire track and duplicate it. Control D, boom, now I got two of them. And what I'm going to do is, I have two tracks, I'm going to take all the content from the one I just duplicated and delete it. But I have a secondary track there. Now I'm going to verify where my issue kind of is, and I know it's around here. Oof. Okay, so I want to zoom in. This is in Ableton, by the way. I'm going to zoom you in as well. And as we get closer, we'll be able to find exactly where that bad note is. It should be, I think, this one, but let's see. Yeah, it's definitely this one right here. And what I want to do is I want clean margins. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this bit with clean margins. And I'm going to drag it down exactly into the track I created as a duplicate. Now... If I listen to this, you shouldn't be able to hear any difference. It'll just, you'll be hearing one track, and you'll hear the other track. And I can see that I got that problem nice and isolated. Now I have my keyboard set up here, and I was able to kind of figure out what that melody was on my keyboard. It, it turns out it's kind of based out of a G major. It goes... And I will hear that note as being super incorrect when it comes up, but let's see where we're at. Yeah, and really what I need there at the very end of that is I'm gonna need a G, which I am nowhere near. So what I did was I added a MIDI track all the way down here below where this vocal is. I know the note that I want to G. I got my keyboard ready. I know where G is. Right when that note comes up, I'm just going to play a G on the keyboard. We're going to set it to record. Let's see how we do. The alarm rang for days. And there's my MIDI note G. It looks like I came in a little bit late, but we don't really care. We'll figure this all out in a second. I did go ahead and rename this track bad vox and right when it happens you can actually see the meter will line up but only on that word the alarm rang for days. You and there it was and right at that moment you could see the midi note was there but here's the little bit of magic on this midi track and this is in ableton i can say midi 2 and i can pull it down and i can assign it to bad vox. Now I got to be a little bit clever here. I am sending that MIDI note over to this channel. Now if I bring up my autocorrect, this is Waves Tune Real Time. 
it's a little more expensive than the normal Waves Tune unit, but it has a really cool feature. Let me see if I can zoom you in here. And right here it says MIDI Input Keyboard. And I can turn this button on that says Target Pitch. So check it out. You're going to watch this keyboard in the Waves Tune plugin identify this G note when it happens. And what, what it just showed you was it showed you it trying to snap that vocal to a G. Well, it was a little bit iffy. Listen again. It didn't, it made it to a G eventually, but listen to this. Yes, yeah, it kind of got there eventually. So here's a couple tricks. When you're looking at the actual MIDI track itself, what I can do is, if I'm clever, I can look at this track and I can take this note here and just pull it forward. And I can see on my main screen now, this MIDI note actually starts before that vocal even came in. Okay. You guys might be curious, why did I separate the bad note out of this track? And it's for this exact reason. Sometimes I want this MIDI note to come in before the bad note was sung. Now, if I had all left this on one track and then set up my pitch correction to follow a MIDI note and then I hit a G and I hit it early, it would have snapped whatever note was prior, would have also been snapped to G. But it's on its own track. I can drag the MIDI note way ahead of it. Pro tip. Okay, so here it is with the MIDI note prior. Let's see if it gets to the G on time. And there it is, ahead of time. Not so bad. But there's even more we can do to it. Just like with any kind of automatic pitch correcting software, we're usually kind of messing with the knob that allows us to change the speed of what's happening with this. Now I got it dialed way down because I want it sort of instantaneous. Let me crank this up and you'll find even with the early MIDI note, it's going to kind of take its time getting that note all the way down to a G. Let me turn it up so this will be really obvious. Wang Fa Jays! Like really kind of shaky. If I crank the time all the way down, it's going to be a real T-pain kind of note. It's going to, no matter what, it's just going to be G and it can't possibly be anything else. And that's a little bit robotic, even for a Gary Newman song. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of tweak it to give it a little bit of time to get there and hopefully be more human sounding. Eh, it's a little bit much still. That's much better, and I don't really quite like it when it's all the way down. The other thing that I'm going to do is I do have uh, an amount of correction that I can apply to this thing, and let me see if I take it down to maybe 70%. Ooh, let me bring it up to 95. And let me bring it to 97. And let me just make it a hair faster. It's probably not the, the best possible fix I could get with this, but you know what? We're going to put it in the mix. We're going to check it out. It is a double-tracked vocal. It might be okay. Let's see. And here's our test. Do you love rank for taste? You can tell from conversation. And just to show you what actually happened there, uh, I did leave in uh, the vocal in the left speaker uh, because it was pretty much where I wanted it. My normal right side one is off, and what we're listening to was uh, track six and seven. This is the one that had the bad note in it. It's been MIDI corrected, but only in that one spot. So now I have my left right field. And does this sound unnatural? Do you love rank for taste? You could tell from conversations. If I wasn't listening for it, I probably couldn't hear it, and probably neither will your clients. 
there's great software out there for Melodyne where I could have just seen an image of this melody and I could have just grabbed it and pulled it down on that one word. Waves actually has something similar in the other Waves Tune plugins that are not the real-time ones. Um, you can do that exact same thing. I'm not actually a giant fan of that. I would actually prefer to play it on a keyboard and use MIDI to control it and I can go back and edit the timing of that MIDI any way I want. I'd rather play it than mouse it. But that's just me. Now, there's some cool things that you can do with this other than that. Maybe you're composing a song, and you may have sung it one way, and you can think to yourself, well, I'm a player. Let me play that melody in after the fact, after I've sung something, and listen to the song, the same version that I sang, but with a new melody. Or let me duplicate that track and play it once as a normal melody and play it again as a harmony. It's a great way to get ideas for how to compose and write a melody and a harmony. Special shout out to Orlando Drummond Retro Sound Studios uh, for working on all the music that you heard in the background of this classic Gary Newman song, Me I Disconnect From You. It was an honor for me to uh, lay some vocals on it and it might be forthcoming on something that he's got coming out. So check it out. You might get to hear the full version of this, and if you're a big fan of Gary Newman like I am, I hope you really enjoy this. I hope I did it some justice. As always, guys, I appreciate you coming out. Don't forget, we are on Facebook, Recording Tips, great group to come join, and that's where this question came to us from, from Adam Townsend, who was having an issue with a song. He's looking at different ways that he can address it. This is just my way of doing it. You know what you can do? Let me know in the comments how do you address this. Or better yet, come over to our Facebook group and join the discussion there, how about? And while you're here, click subscribe. It allows experts to see that we have some traffic on this channel so we can lure them in. It's a good thing for the channel, and I do appreciate you taking the moment to click. Well, guys, we got work to do. Let's get to it. Oh, man. <clears throat> guys, thank you guys all for coming out. I had um, I had a cool time putting this together because, you know, getting to work with uh, Orlando, Retro Sound Studios, a uh, big shout out to the credibility of how he put together this Gary Newman song for us. Um, well, not for us. Uh, and I'm very happy to have put a, uh, a vocal track on it for him. Now... Uh, one thing I, in this video that I was not really super clear about, uh, I wanted to make this really accessible, so I showed me entering one MIDI note and recording the one MIDI note. That could have just as easily have been um, a melody, where, you know, days, and if I went, you know, da-da-da, it would have gone days, it would follow anything that I would have done. And I use this as a composing tool. I, I mentioned it briefly in the video where I can just kind of mon monotone, almost like rap a lyric. And then I can go in on my keyboard and record MIDI underneath it and have it appear as a melody when I listen back to it. And I can uh, edit the MIDI or I can replay it or I could say, oh, I like that. And I would never probably use that in a song other than as a guide but it's a very cool way to kind of tweak melodies and say, oh, well, you know, I wouldn't expect that note to have worked that well, especially when I'm doing harmonies. If I'm doing a harmony, I don't always necessarily hear a good harmony right away. And even uh, applying music theory, I don't necessarily reason through it as well as I would like sometimes. But with my ears, my guide, and I can do this in real time. You know, MIDI, uh, while I'm playing it, I can hear it actually affect it. And if I decide to record it, that's great. Um, but the one thing I did in the video was I changed the timing of where that MIDI note came in so that it happened prior to where I wanted the change. 
that's something that I found is actually with this plugin, even if I record something that I like on the keyboard and it and it's kind of lining up with the timing of the vocal, I do find that shifting it slightly ahead gives it I think it gives the uh, the waves tune real time a little of advanced notice of where you expect it to go. Like it knows the MIDI note that you want it to be on a hundred milliseconds later. And that way I can kind of turn the delay up, like you saw me do in the software, how quick it reacts to something, um, and really get a more natural so sound out of it. Now, I, I did kind of compare to in Melodyne, where you could have, you know, I could have gone to that note, you know, found the note and dragged it down to a G and it would have hit a G and I could have, you know, ramped it up to give it like a kind of a natural sound. If I was spot fixing a single note, uh, like you saw me do here, you know, uh, th using the other versions of Waves Tune uh, or using Melodyne or there's other software out there that does that, for a single note fix, I really, I could go either way. I could go either way. However, being able to apply MIDI uh, and, uh, you know, to put melodies in or put harmonies in or try a, try a bunch of things like that, really can't beat it. Um, I find a huge advantage to working that way. And I will mention one other thing about it, too, that if I'm not playing any MIDI notes at all, it's still doing its pitch correction at whatever speed and at whatever percentage I have set if I leave it all on the same track. Well, depending on how much pitch correction I would want on a normal track, if I don't want any, that's when separating it out will really kind of be helpful. And uh, if I do want a hair of pitch correction on everything anyway, um, I don't necessarily have to separate it out. I could have just all of a sudden during the chorus played one or two notes in MIDI and had that button selected in the software so it knew to snap it to the MIDI note. But in the absence of the MIDI note, it just turns it into its normal mild pitch correction that you may not even know uh, you might not even know that it's on. Ah, so much to uh, talk about this. Big shout out to Adam Townsend who, uh, in our group in Facebook, Recording Tips, brought up these ideas of um, how can I address this specific thing, and I've been talking to him a little bit about this. Um, check out his latest mix that he's got up on the group. Uh, he is really... Uh, coming into his own as a fantastic engineer. And this was a little trick I thought that could help him. I know he ran out and bought this plug-in uh, this plug -in when I said, yeah, you know, if you have this, you could just do notes on the keyboard. He, <laughs> So hopefully this will give him some pro tips on doing that. So Brian, Jarrett, Oren, Joe, thanks guys for coming out. I always have a wonderful time with this. Thanks for staying overtime with us as well. Um, got any questions? ask down in the comments or pop into our Facebook group, Recording Tips, where beginners, uh, people with some skills, up through experts, come and ask your questions there. We'll always give you the straight answers. All right, we got work to do, guys.